Okay, well, we're gonna get started here and we're gonna run through the steps. I'll start off by donning my PPE. Of course, we'll be placing a surgical hat and a surgical mask for this procedure. Okay, in preparation for placing an epidural, uh, we would want to have the patient um, monitored with a pulse ox, blood pressure cuff, and we would want her as well to uh, be getting nasal cannula oxygen at three liters. Let's start with our procedure timeout. We have Mary Smith, medical record number 654321, presenting at 40 weeks, consented for an epidural for labor and delivery. She has no drug allergies, no other medical problems, has had an uneventful pregnancy, and if we're all in agreement, we'll begin the procedure. Okay, so we have our tray here that we're gonna go ahead and open. And we'll remove the inner packaging. go ahead and get the tray itself opened up. So now we're ready to go ahead and get our sterile gloves on. Go ahead and get these opened up and ready to go. First, we'll place a little hand sanitizer first. Okay, and we're ready to go ahead and prep now. So here's our prep. We have a sterile towel that oftentimes we'll place underneath the patient to catch anything that might drip down. So we'll fold it over to protect our sterile gloves and lean forward, ma'am, if you would. There we go. And starting at the insertion site, we will move out in concentric circles, never going over the same area twice, and we'll go all the way down. And we can go ahead and place our fenestrated drape. Okay, uh, so our next step is going to be to get um, our medications drawn up. We have some 1% lidocaine for our skin wheel. Use my filter straw here. Get that drawn up. And we can also go ahead and get our test dose drawn up as well. All right, so we have the sterile drape in place, so we can palpate the iliac crest and identify our landmarks. So with my hands on the iliac crest and my fingers, my thumbs coming together, this will approximate where the L45 inner space is, right where my thumb is, and that is where I will place my skin wheel. We would use about a cc and raise a nice skin wheel, go in a little deeper and inject on the way out. Okay, let's get our epidural needle. And making sure that the stylet is in place with the key locked into the keyway, bevel up, 
we'll go ahead and place the needle and lodge it in the supraspinous or intraspinous ligament and then remove the stylet. So now I'll get our glass syringe, being very careful not to let the plunger fall out and onto the floor. Attach this to the epidural needle and we should have a nice bounce there. Now, placing my hand against the patient's back and my fingers on the needle, we'll advance slowly, about a half centimeter at a time, testing the bounce as we advance. We have good loss of resistance there as we penetrate the ligamentum flavum and enter the epidural space. We'll disconnect and I'm going to check one more time for loss of resistance. And we have good loss of resistance there. Check to make sure there is no free flowing CSF indicating that you've entered the subarachnoid space by mistake. Um, and this looks good. We're now ready to thread the catheter. All right, so let's go ahead and get our catheter put in. You wanna hold it so that it's angled upward. Get it started, place the introducer, and advance till you're at the solid mark, indicating the catheter is now at the tip of the needle. Remember that we want three to five centimeters of catheter in the epidural space. The needle itself is nine centimeters long. We have one, two, three, four, roughly four and a half centimeters showing. So we know that we're four and a half centimeters approximately to the epidural space right now. Let's begin advancing the catheter. The entire needle, nine centimeters plus the hub, which adds another two approximately. So we're gonna to advance to about, oh, 16 or 17 centimeters. Right about there. And we're now ready to withdraw the needle. So again, take note of how much needle is showing. That'll be important when we um, place our catheter at its final um, correct depth. To remove the needle, I'm gonna withdraw the needle while pushing in on the catheter. There we go. And now very carefully remove the needle making sure that you don't shear the catheter with the tip of the needle. Now, again, we were at, we'll call it five centimeters in with the needle. We want three or four, so we should have, we should withdraw this to about nine centimeters. So there's 10, there's nine. So that would be about the right depth. Um, five centimeters in, four centimeters into the epidural space. Okay, with the catheter properly placed, we'll now attach our lower lock connector. it all the way in and snap it down that's on there and we'll go ahead and place our filter okay and now we're ready to go ahead and inject our test dose this is one and a half lidocaine one and a half percent lidocaine with epinephrine one to two hundred thousand 
aspirate gently, making sure that we don't see blood or CSF. And we'll go ahead and inject three cc's, telling the patient, of course, to let us know if they have any ringing in their ears, numbness in their mouth, metallic taste, and um, we're listening, of course, for the pulse ox, changes, a sudden change in heart rate, indicating an intravascular injection. With our test dose in, we can go ahead and get the drape off the patient. Grab the catheter here, come through the hole. We have our little foam device here that'll help secure the catheter and keep it from kinking at the skin. Place it like that. And then we'll place the catheter over the patient's shoulder. Give it a nice gentle loop. Like that. And then of course we would place a tegaderm over the puncture site. And you probably wanna put some strips of two inch tape up the patient's back and over their shoulder to secure it. And then the final step, and you don't wanna skip this step, is to place the epidural catheter caution sticker on the catheter. Right there. And uh, if you have an infusion, you would take the other sticker and put it on the infusion line that's connected to the filter. Okay, so with the catheter secured and labeled, we would lay the patient down at this point and uh, proceed to dose the epidural through the catheter. And that's about it. That concludes the epidural catheter insertion procedure.